Terry, in the 70s, you became a household name as a quarterback. But did you ever imagine that you would still be a household name 40 years later because of your role on national television? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you going to be a football player when you grow up? Today is the best day of your life. Believe Give it. me. Give me 18 years of daylight. That's all right. Greatest leader I've ever known. What a ride it's been. That's just funny. <laughs> there they are. Hey, girls. Hey, Hello. girls. Hey, girls. Let's say, boys. They look pretty good. Oh, buddy. Dang. Oh, they look better, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. They look much better. Terry Bradshaw has lived most of his life in the spotlight. But this is home. A 700-acre Oklahoma ranch, where he and his wife, Tammy, breed and raise world champion American quarter horses. You bring your horse out, you square her up, it's basically a beauty contest. But then there's points of judgment. Forearm, chest, head, beauty, neck, the way it ties, how pretty and keen it is. All those horses over there are multiple world champions. If anyone knows what it takes to make a champion, see, it is Terry Bradshaw. He's got a rope on this one. Probably not quite ready. The quarterback started off as a wild stallion, overcame years of rough breaking in, and consistently finished in the winner's circle. Bradshaw is the first quarterback to lead his team to four Super Bowl titles, and help make the Steelers of the 70s one of football's greatest dynasties. We would not have been as successful. We would not have won those four Super Bowls if it wasn't for Bradshaw. Out of all the Hall of Fame players that we had during that period of time, he was the one key factor in our success. And I don't believe any other quarterback could have done it. My nature was attack. Throw it deep. Anybody can throw wide. Let's go deep. You got him play in the huddle, Swan, let's throw a hook. John say, Brad, I got him on a deep curl, 50 yard. Throw it deep, let's go deep. I don't know that if there was a quarterback that I played against during that period of time that was anywhere close to the velocity to Terry where he could squeeze the football in place that the other quarterbacks wouldn't even think about trying. When we got on the practice field, when he threw the ball, if you're standing anywhere within 10 feet of it, you could hear it. You could hear it whistle. The ball would actually be singing a song. It, it was, has such sharpness on it, and the spin on it was so tight. I've seen guys' hands split. I'm talking about between the fingers from trying to catch Terry's balls. If Terry had to scramble, Terry was not a beautiful runner, but, you know, he kind of galloped along. Bradshaw, still going. Oh, he, he's a horse. You better be prepared to either make a real tackle or just get out of the way. Because Terry's a big boy to bring down. I don't think that there was any limits on Terry, whether it was throwing the ball, running, escaping the rush. And we saw it. I mean, one of the great plays in history, the immaculate reception. I mean, if Terry doesn't elude that rusher, that play doesn't happen. Bradshaw running out of the pocket, looking for somebody to throw to, fires it downfield. It's all about those moments, and can you make those moments happen? And he made a lot of big moments happen. 
Over his 14-year career, Bradshaw was at the center of some of the greatest moments in NFL history. Yet his football accomplishments can still come as a surprise to a younger generation. Oh, man, he just Ducked weaves in and out of all those guys. Never seen this before. That is unreal. Isn't that crazy. I didn't know Dad was that fast. I didn't know he scored that many touchdowns. Dang. That's where I get it from. Whoa. God, that was a badass. I was not around when he played, so growing up for me, I always knew that that was a part of his life, but I think it took me a little bit longer to understand what who he was and like how good he was. He would joke about him being a football player. Yeah. But we didn't know what the heck he was talking yeah. about, but he it was like funny. And we didn't realize, we're like, Dad, you're a big deal. He goes, I know I'm a big deal. He has got to have a big game today. I just thought Dad was a TV personality. Get the ball to Anthony Carter. Forget a younger audience has grown up with Terry Bradshaw on TV. He's got to get the ball to Carter. He's the Hall of Fame player became an Emmy Award winning analyst. You can't play conservative and be a championship football team. You can't. And has remained a television staple for nearly four decades. All the way to the Super Bowl. He presents football in a way that no one else can. Because in my first playoff game, I about tinkled down my britches leg. I'm telling you, <laughs> I could barely breathe. I he out. just captivates a room. This is a whole lot bigger than I thought. He's larger than life, born entertainer. He's like a moth. If there's a light, he goes to the light. He wants to entertain. No former athlete has entertained over so many years, over so many different platforms, as Terry Bradshaw. How you doing tonight? He is a best-selling author, has recorded country and gospel music albums. I went, oh, Terry. Toured the country with a one-man stage show. You're a hero to millions. Received his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and appeared in TV and movies alongside some of the biggest names in show business. Homer, Bart, welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Terry Bradshaw. Wow, Terry Bradshaw, the man who won four Super Bowls despite having the first name of a girl. Hey! When he was on The Simpsons, <laughs> if you have your own character <laughs> as, as a Simpson, you've made it. Like, that's cool. That's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. We were in high school, and he told us he did a movie and it was going to be in theaters, but no, no one knew. We Obviously, just heard Matthew McConaughey, and I'm like, oh. yeah. I flew to the premiere with my grandma, and we are watching, and... He's like, oh, just by the way, my butt's about to be shown. I'm like, what are you talking about, your butt? You're naked <laughs> in my room. Well, uh, this is my naked room. <laughs> I mean, it's my house. Man ought to be able to do whatever he wants to do in his own house. Wore a suit for 40 years. And all of a sudden, his white, flat butt shows up <laughs> on the screen. I'm like, what is going on? And I thought my, my southern nanny, who, I mean, that is not okay yeah. with her, I thought she was going to walk out of the theater. <laughs> you know, whether it's the movies, it's the speeches, it's the Super Bowls as a player, Super Bowls as a broadcaster, he has led a life that I, people could just dream of. Terry Bradshaw certainly seems to have it all. Yet his incredible rise to the top has been a complicated journey. A life filled with memorable triumphs and emotional pains that are difficult to forget. One of the reasons I did not want to do this show for so long was that, first of all, you got to heal and you got to get past things. And you, you have to mature and you gotta figure things out and now's the time, it's fine. Well, this thing's just downright cute. Hmm? Hey, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> He's so pretty. Yes, you are. I always have said this about myself, that I'm five years behind everybody at every major stage of development. 
are you doing? My emotional stability is five years behind. My maturity from high school is way behind. Look at this. This thing's a month old. You believe this? Hmm? Hey. It's a child's way of looking at life. A child sees the world as a rainbow. I had a great childhood. I lived in the suburb of Shreveport, and we spent so much time in a little town called Hall Summit, Louisiana, my grandfather's farm. I was introduced to fishing in creeks and catching crawfish and going raccoon hunting. It was just so much fun. When I got my um, first football for Christmas, I was drawn to it. I was seven years old. And uh, I remember telling my dad, I said, I'm going to play professional football. You know, he's like, that's great, boy. Yeah, go get out of here, you know. There was no denying the kid had an arm. At Woodlawn High School, Terry Bradshaw set a national record throwing the javelin. And the farm kid could heave a football a country mile. He committed to a major college program, but soon had second thoughts. I signed with LSU, but it was so much pressure, and you know, the big time at LSU, and I don't want to go to LSU. I just felt the pressure to sign there. And I took the ACC test, and my game plan was, I'll be the first one out of there. <laughs> I was out of there, man. I flunked that thing so bad. And, you know, and I'm sure LSU's going, my God, this guy's a moron. <laughs> I had my out. I didn't have to go to LSU. So now, Louisiana Tech has been after me all along. And uh, as a country boy or a simple kid, that's really where I should have gone. Small town, small school. The coach that I am deeply emotionally connected to is Mickey Slaughter, my college coach, because he understood me. He's the one that tapped into me and knew how to guide me. He was the kind of guy that responded to encouragement. Criticism, he didn't react well to that. I very rarely ever said anything to him that would cause him to duck his head. You know, if he made a bad throw, hey, you made a bad throw, let's go. I didn't know anything about reading coverages. I could drop back and wing it, let it fly. When I got to the sideline, no matter what happened, Mickey would grab me and hug me. Hey, baby, don't worry about it, baby. We'll get him next time, baby. That's all right. Don't worry about it, big guy. My head coach, don't worry about it, TB. It's all right, baby. We love you. It's all right, everybody. TB is good. And I'd go back out the next and boom, 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 boom. By his senior season, Bradshaw had become the nation's top pro prospect. And in 1970, the Pittsburgh Steelers made him the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. The Southern kid was headed north to a long-suffering team that had never won a postseason game. You think you're going to become a city boy? City boy? I think I better. <laughs> I'm going to be, a, I'll be right there in Pittsburgh. I'm going to have to get used to it. I like it. I, I can adjust. Uh, like I said, I love to get out in the country and, and fish. and I love dogs and I love to ride horses. These things I'm going to miss, but uh, if I could make a successful stay in Pittsburgh, I'd have to adjust to the big city life. And uh, if this be the case, then I know I could do it. I had to grow up, and it was a large part of me. I just didn't want the business side of football. You know, I just thought we were just going to be like college, man. We are just going to have so much fun. There it comes, Terry. He's a blonde bomber. Yeah. The prized rookie's career couldn't have started much worse. He was sacked for safeties in each of his first three games. He finished the year with six touchdown passes and 24 interceptions. There was a reporter that came out and said, you know, this guy made some dumb mistakes, dumb mistakes, kept coming out, dumb mistakes, and finally it just came out, hey, this guy's not too sharp. I'm sure the way I answered questions and the way I talked. I'd like to say hello to my Uncle Bobby and Aunt Margie and my mother and dad and my Uncle Duck. Listen, we talk slow from the south because it's friggin' hot out there in the summertime. You gotta take your time. 
conserve your energy. You know what I'm saying? Up north, they talk like this because it's cold and down the south. But if you talk like this, then you're stupid. <laughs> because he was from the south, he had the tooth missing. They associated that with being dumb. Over his first few seasons, the wide-eyed southern kid faced harsh realities, continued struggles on the field, and an impatient fan base. Nothing went well for him. And off the field, he was just looking for someone to put their arms around him and say, Terry, everything's going to be all right. But to my knowledge, I don't know if anyone ever did that. And that was a tough time for him. There was a, a, is that God telling me not to say this? <laughs> I don't have a problem talking about Chuck at all, but people didn't understand how hard it was to play for him. And it wasn't fun. Even winning wasn't fun. It's just this. When Terry Bradshaw arrived in Pittsburgh, the fun-loving quarterback was paired with a no-nonsense head coach. Chuck Knoll was a stoic teacher of fundamentals, not the type of motivator the young quarterback had in college. I feared the hell out of him. Like him? No, I didn't like him. I don't know why he drafted me. I never was his kind of guy. I'm cows and horses and dogs. And he was wine and Russian literature and stuff I have no clue. I no doubt got under his skin. I was a kid that needed a pat on the back, not an ass chewing, and that's what Chuck did to me. He chewed my ass. That's not how I would respond. That doesn't bring the best out in me. And I think he thought he needed to be hard on me because I was a mama's boy. And hey, let's go out there and have a good time today, boy. How about that, huh? Woo! How would you describe your relationship with Terry? Business-like. You know, it was all business. You know, I think you see a lot of Terry on TV right now. He's fun-loving, kind of devil-may-care. And we couldn't have that in our quarterback. He even told me one time, why don't you study and prepare like... Johnny Unitas. I, I don't know how he studies and prepares. I said, what am I doing wrong? He says, you don't seem to focus. You don't seem to take things serious. And I said, absolutely take things serious. You want me to be Johnny? Hell, I'd love to have been Johnny Unitas. You know, but I wasn't, so. Sorry, Lord. As the quarterback continued to struggle, the stormy relationship with his coach continued to brew. Bradshaw began the 1974 season on the bench behind third-year man Joe Gillum. Yeah, it was embarrassing. So I decided, well, I don't like it up here anyway. And in a way, this is good because now I can get out of here. So I went into his office and said, I want to be traded. He proceeded to tell me how great I was. <laughs> Which was, which was strange. At midseason, with the Steelers in a playoff race, Noel reinstated Bradshaw as his starter. When I think about Chuck, he made me tough. I got tough and nasty. You had to. As a quarterback who called his own plays, Bradshaw may have shown his greatest maturity in the unselfish way he ran the offense. I always admired this about Terry. Quarterbacks normally have egos that are bigger than this room. And in 1974, Terry could throw the ball just as well as he did in 78 and 79. He understood the components he had around. He had a damn good defense. He had a running game. They were looking for the pass. Bradshaw called it perfectly, a draw play. And he probably threw the ball 15, 18 times in a game. Other quarterbacks might have been complained and bitched and moaned about, you know, I need to throw the ball more downfield. He just assimilated into this football team and how we could win championships. 
But still, you always knew that Terry was able to make big plays at any time. In a way, as Terry goes, the team goes. In 1974, Pittsburgh reached the playoffs for the third straight year, and Bradshaw was at his best in the postseason. For the long, struggling quarterback, a season that began on the bench, ended in his team's first Super Bowl. Here is Bradshaw, rolling right, and fires into the end zone. Complete the touchdown, and he drags out of the end zone. Pittsburgh, the Super Bowl jack. Terry Bradshaw, all week long, said I'm tired of the animation that I'm a dumb football player. Bradshaw's been booed for five years in Pittsburgh. He has come into his own the last month. The last three games, does that answer all your critics? Well, I, uh, I'd i like to say it's all said and done and in the past, but uh, I don't think you can ever really please or, or uh, you know, please everyone. And uh, I'm going to have to go on living with it, uh, Super Bowl or not. I just don't believe it's going to settle anything. I just believe it's something that's been passed down now for five years, and heaven knows why. I certainly didn't deserve it, but I've, I've been labeled uh, what we've been talking mm -hmm. about, which I don't even like to get into, but I'm hoping it's over with, but I know it is. Let's go, Joe. Let's go, T, baby. The following year, the Steelers returned to the Super Bowl. And Bradshaw put the game away in the fourth quarter. Third down and five. Here is Bradshaw. Lynn Swan is open. Got it. Steeler touchdown. That's got to be one of the great passes in Super Bowl history or in pro football history. Repeat. The difference in the game was going to be who could make the big play. Terry Bradshaw's great throw, standing in there under pressure. And uh, Terry just let that thing fly. I had definitely grown up. I'm a lovable old country kid that, you know, I want everybody to like everybody and everybody to get along, everybody to be loving and kind. And that's just not how the world is. And I just didn't know that. So. He opened up my eyes, and for that, I'm very appreciative. There comes Terry Bradshaw now. Where's that? Terry, Terry, Terry. Good luck today, man. Hey, Franco. Watch yourself. See you later. Okay. By the mid-'70s, Terry Bradshaw had truly arrived both as a quarterback and a celebrity. When the weather gets cold, the black and gold are going to be Super Bowl bound, 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 bound. Oh, jeez. He explored a side career in country music and appeared in a series of movies with Hollywood icon Burt Reynolds. Now, I doubt I could have done that without a Super Bowl win or two. Because if you win Super Bowls, you get to do movies and you get to record. Whether you're good at either one, doesn't matter. <laughs> Bird, if you're watching, talk to my agent about my next movie. <laughs> Make it a Western. You gonna let me be in it? Yeah. <laughs> Bradshaw was becoming a larger-than-life hero with a confidence and bravado he had lacked earlier in his career. I think for a lot of years, Terry went through some issues, and it wasn't until he had gone through those that he started to mature, that he started to relax as a quarterback. Terry seemed much more assured of what he could do. So I think the late 70s, I think Terry was actually enjoying playing football. Here is Bradshaw giving the ball to Blyer. Blyer reverses it to Swan. He gives it back to Bradshaw. Bradshaw firing for Cunningham. A Pittsburgh touchdown to win the ball game. In 1978, Bradshaw led the NFL in touchdown passes and was named the league's most valuable player. The quarterback had turned his career around, yet he still hadn't shaken a hurtful image. Leading up to Super Bowl XIII, Cowboys linebacker Thomas Hollywood Henderson 
publicly questioned Bradshaw's intelligence. Hollywood Henderson said that if you spotted Terry the C and the T, he couldn't spell cat. I couldn't spell cat if you spotted me the C and the T. Well, wow. Aren't you just clever? And then, you know, it's a Super Bowl. I'm just inundated with questions about Henderson. We know that's how he is, and I, th I find it interesting. It's, I think it's uh, kind of uplifting. Uh, I've never seen too many people like that, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, enjoying some of the things he's saying. I think it's funny. You say the right things just to avoid stirring it up anymore. But inside, I was steaming. Terry proved during that game that he was smart enough to beat those guys. Bradshaw throws deep for Stallworth in the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Bradshaw threw for more than 300 yards and four touchdowns, both career firsts. What a brilliant throw by Bradshaw. Bradshaw has been named the most valuable player in this game. And then afterwards, I couldn't help myself. Ask him, you know, how smart do I look now? The following year, Bradshaw led the Steelers to their fourth Super Bowl title in six years. He was once again the game's most valuable player. And Bradshaw dropping back. Now Bradshaw pumping, firing downfield. There goes Stallworth. He pulls it in, and it's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. My greatest worry all week long of the Super Bowl was losing, not winning. Because this is who you are. This is the defining moment in your life, professional life. So I had this ability to just focus and dial myself in. I just did not want to lose a Super Bowl. I just didn't think I could deal with it. Winning is so consuming. I remember the stress and the tension and the migraine headaches after the games were just so dialed in. And it just wasn't pleasant. I told my dad, after Super Bowl fourteen, man, I need to retire. I, I've had enough of this. And he says, son, he said, that's your call. You've had enough, you've had enough. I said, my dad, I said, we're just gonna have to go back and do it again. And I said, I just don't know if I have the strength. After nearly retiring following Super Bowl XIV, Terry Bradshaw decided to continue his career. However, he never came close to another championship. In 1983, a lingering elbow injury sidelined Bradshaw nearly the entire season. I couldn't even go to the games. It killed me. And I should go to the games. I should, and I went, I went a couple of times. I couldn't stand, I, there's a guy out there playing my position and it's killing me. Get me out of here. And then I had a coach that, not here, he's not on the team, we're not talking about him. No. Chuck said, I, there's nothing I can do about Bradshaw at this moment in time, so I have to focus on the team and put kind of Brad on a shelf over here. But I think I wanted Chuck to say, boy, we really need you, man. You should take your time, get well. Whatever you gotta do, get well. You're our guy. I mean, that makes me pretty insecure, doesn't it? But I, you know. It's the way I am. That's when we started in the papers, see? That's when Noel and Bradshaw started clashing. After a season of public feuding with his coach, Bradshaw made his long-awaited return in week 15. He threw for two touchdowns to help the Steelers secure a playoff spot. Terry Bradshaw, and zipping that 10-yard touchdown throw to Calvin Sweeney, came off in pain. Bradshaw re-injured his elbow and wouldn't throw another NFL pass. The following summer, at the age of 35, he was officially done. 
When I retired, I was relieved. That's why people say, you miss it. No, I don't miss it at all. I remember one quote I made. I said, well, now I can be myself. I don't have to be uh, hardline or serious. I don't want to be serious. I never want to be serious again the rest of my life. I hate serious. It's no fun being serious. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is for me to welcome you. Less than two months after his retirement, Bradshaw began a new career. So easy. <laughs> right. You know, I really never thought I could have butterflies so big in my belly. After my At that point, 1984, I'm not sure there was anyone that would say, this guy's going to be an entertainment icon, a sports entertainment icon. Hello, folks, I'm Terry Bradshaw. And this After is 10 seasons at CBS, Bradshaw helped launch a new NFL broadcast partner. 75 years the National Football League is being played. This is our first day. We are thrilled to have you here. I think the critics had concerns about Fox getting the package, and we wanted to kind of rethink the idea of the pregame, and it all started with Terry. This show is big. And the emphasis on being more natural, more conversational. And I think one of the reasons why it worked is because we're not rehearsed. You can't rehearse Terry. This is Howie Long, eight time uh, Pro Bowler. Bradshaw had become part of a new family and cut ties with an old one. For nearly two decades following his retirement, he would keep a distance from Chuck Knoll, the Steelers, and the city of Pittsburgh. When I left Pittsburgh, it was difficult. It was difficult to go out the way I went out. I was angry. When I left Pittsburgh, I was angry. I didn't want to face those people. Pittsburgh fans, the Pittsburgh press, Chuck Knowles. They will see his face. At his Hall of Fame induction, instead of having a member of the Steelers introduce him, he chose broadcast partner Vern Lundquist. Mr. Terry Bradshaw. There was an uproar from the media here. How come not a teammate and or, or Chuck, you know? And so the local media took him to task over that. Art Rooney. Bradshaw had always been close with Steelers owner Art Rooney. Boy, I love that man. Yet when Rooney I, died, I know you're watching, Art. I love you. Bradshaw did not return to Pittsburgh for the funeral. I always put it on me. I'm the one that had to grow up. I'm the one that had to make the adjustments. I would never, ever want anybody to think that I did it right. I did it wrong. But... That was the way I handled things back then. Maybe, it's, it, maybe I'm healing again. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know one thing. If I hurt people's feelings or made them mad, I apologize. I never, it's just, I just didn't know how to handle it. Time is a marvelous medicine. So I wanted to mend all the fences that I felt like I had created in 2002, Bradshaw prepared for his first public return to a Steelers game in nearly two decades. His two daughters accompanied him on the trip. We never talked about the Steelers or that awkward tension that dad felt that was there. And dad said, this is my homecoming. I haven't been back in two decades. And I don't know if they're gonna, if they boo us, then we're gonna run off the field. And I was just so confused. I just remember us getting there and I had never been to Pittsburgh and been around my dad with his fans. And they're either going to boo you or they're going to love you. Absolutely, I think there was a lot of nerves that day. He was holding our hands on the sidelines and my dad's hands are like this big and just sweating and shaking and I, I just didn't know, okay, I hope this is going to be awesome because I don't really know how he's going to react if it's not. Get when we stood out there and just whoa, like yeah. the entire crowd. I get chills just you know talking about it. Thank you very much. At 
That sounds good. Keep on. That's all right. You keep going. I knew at that moment, take this all in, because this might be the very last time this ever happens. And what a cool experience for daughters. Like, we were never able to see that career, but now we're back, and he's back home. And it was just, I was like, damn, Dad, that's, that's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be home. God bless all of you. Thank you. Coming up. There's a lot of unanswered questions as to our relationship. I moved on with my life. It keeps being brought back up. Terry Bradshaw has long enjoyed the simple life, yet he has endured years of difficult lessons. After experiencing the pain of three divorces, he married Tammy in 2014. This is your show, your champion, Barbie. You showed her. I now get what marriage really should have been like with the first one. She needs to be your best friend, and so thank God I finally got that part right. I married my best friend. Hey, Quincy. <laughs> there are still hard days for Bradshaw. Hey, Biff. Hey, buddy. Years ago, he revealed that through much of his life, he suffered from depression. He's so sweet. Something he still deals with today. You ain't cute, I'll pay for lying. Look at that thing. I know when it's coming, you feel it. And people out there that deal with this understand it. I would say in the last two years, it's not come about as much. If it shows up now, it might be for a day or two. And I can see it coming because literally you can see it in the eyes. It's like I'm lo you're looking at me, but you're not really there. It's almost like he just goes someplace else. And as much as I want to reach in and pull him back, I I've learned I can't. kind of have to step back and just let the wave roll through. As Bradshaw moves forward, he still confronts painful reminders of the past. His feelings toward Chuck Knoll remain complicated. I miss my coach. I love my coach. I miss Chuck Knoll. In 2003, Bradshaw publicly made amends with his former coach. A decade later, he drew criticism for not attending Knoll's funeral. I'm not a funeral guy. I don't mean this in disrespect. That's just who I am, okay? Bad, good, indifferent, doesn't matter. Um, is it the right thing to do? Well, what's right for me? Is, what is, what do I feel? There's a lot of unanswered questions as to our relationship. Let him rest in peace. As a football coach, he was just incredible. I moved on with my life, pushed way past all of that. It keeps being brought back up. I have great admiration for Terry. I think he's probably one of the most misunderstood Steelers of all time. I think, first of all, Terry has a good heart. He's a, he's a good person. I think, second, there's a lot of scars, and Terry's the kind of guy who he don't forget. Have there been ups and downs in Terry's life? Absolutely. But I think the difficult times sharpen you and hone who you are uh, as much as anything. And Terry survived all of that. During his career, Bradshaw survived the hurt of being called a dumb quarterback. He then spent decades perpetuating the image. When people have a perception Another one over here. You just take it and you make it work for you. I can play a buffoon. I can be an idiot. I can be silly. You already think I am? Fine, I'll just act the part. Oh, he sells it all the way to the bank. All the way to the bank. Hee-haw! 
Lucky Week 13. Lucky Week 13th. Came out here on the 13th, uh, on Flight 13th, and sat in Seat 13th. No, no, it, it's Flight 13, Seat 13, and you flew out on the 13th. You too? <laughs> Oh, yeah. People have bought that hook, line, and sinker. He's one of the smartest people I've ever been around. To say he has gone well beyond what I think people perceived him to be would be an understatement. I think one thing I learned about him that maybe the public doesn't see as much of is... How smart. He is a very wise smart. man. Let me go there. Yes, He's a very wise man. You know, you can have book sense, be intelligent and know everything from a book standpoint. But to, for me to be wise is a much broader sense. It's experience, it's knowledge, like kind of like an old soul, very wise. And I love that about him too. And I saw a glimpse of a black jersey. The old soul remains young at heart and shows no signs of slowing down. Heard the crowd go crazy. I don't think I've ever seen him as busy ever yeah, he's as he busy is now. now. He doesn't want to be done. He doesn't want to fall off the map. And I think he's that's kind of his proof of like, I can do it and I want to do everything that I can and have as much fun as I can. Look at the size of this sucker. You know, I'm doing football on television. I'm ranching here, raising cows, raising horses. Got a great wife, beautiful kids, grandkids. And then I get, let's go sing. I'm doing the Opry. Grand Ole Opry be my third time. I like the way your sparkling earrings lay. It's fun. I'm not very good. Your skin, it's so but they'll let me go on there and sing, and then I can tell you, what have you been doing, Terry? Well, I just got through doing the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> gotta be me. <laughs> and I got. He's the happiest he's been. I, know you me I just think he's living it up, having the time of his life. Through all the highs and lows, the one thing that I could always say is, regardless of what's going on in his life or where he is emotionally, when the light goes on, my guy performs. And I got Terry Bradshaw is, and always has been, a performer. The bigger the stage, the brighter he shines. His years in Pittsburgh weren't always easy, and while he prefers not to dwell on the past, his impact on the game is hard to forget. I think the thing that I'm most proud of as a football player was that I played big in big games. I played hurt and you could count on me. Right? Isn't that about it? And we won championships, and that was my job. That's what I always said. Hey, here. I leave you Pittsburgh. Here's four titles. God bless you. I enjoy them. You enjoy them. And this kind of sail off the sunset. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Thank you.